first talk that we have today is called Harnessing Byzantine Fault Tolerance Using Classical Theory. And my name is Dr. Thaddeus Westerson. Hi, my name is Dr. Mark Sarkawi. I am from American Freedom University. Um, the, the title of my talk today is about a, it's about a system we, we built called JOG. Um, and it, it's about uh, synthesizing checksums and lambda calculus uh, using our system. Um, it's kind of a revolutionary type system, so that's why we have this icon here on the, uh, on the screen. Um, feel free to interrupt with questions if anyone has any questions. So uh, the work that uh, I'm going to be talking about today is uh, a study of Ethernet, which we all know uh, so well and use on a daily basis. Okay, um, let me start with some motivation. Um, we all know that operating systems, um, the trend in operating systems have been proving that write back caches and meta model are typically uh, more typical than ever. Um, the problem is that current researchers in this field of operating systems and uh, lambda calculus uh, do not typically understand the essential problems involved in things like crypto analysis. Um, and this has actually uh, been an issue in recent years. The reason there's a box of package on the front is uh, uh, it's sort of a cliche analogy, <coughs> excuse me, analogy, um, but one which you know I'll use anyway. You know, if you have this box which is Ethernet, and it's uh, it's wrapped in uh, brown paper, uh, the brown paper of uh, you know uh, various uh, protocol details. And the question is, when you unwrap the box and you open the box, uh, what do you find inside? So in this talk, we're we're going to be talking about job which is a novel system that we, that we designed for uh, the refinement of consistent hashing. Just a, a brief outline of the, of the talk that I'm going to give. First, the overview of the linked list is in terms of the, the Univac computer, which is a very kind of prototypical computer from a long time ago. Then we'll do some more experimental evaluation. Uh, then we'll give you a, a hypothesis. Then we have results. And the results are hopefully going to be interesting. Uh, present the measurement study that we conducted and then conclude. Past studies show that as we network our clients together that it's really thin clients that we care the most about and um, kind of the more full-featured uh, thick clients that might have a lot of link list technology behind it really doesn't kind of, it's not really reflected in the past studies. We need uh, epistemologies that, uh, that, are, that are symbiotic, symbiotic uh, flexible and also in a large scale, that, that will operate on a large scale. And usually it runs in about a big omega of n time. Um, and this is obviously a problem for performance. The usual solution that's presented for this sort of, this sort of uh, uh, problem is, is simply to, 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 to add access points. Um, and and this, this is a solution that actually works, but it's not that interesting. Um, we assume that all the adversaries in the system are going to be behave childlike. You know, that might not seem too topical to what we're we're addressing here, and we want to keep this talk as topical as possible. Uh, we're going to assume also that they're technologically impaired. I'm going to be talking about a different approach, um, which uh, I will show uh, doesn't work, but may work um, someday. Uh, so the question we ask ourselves up at American Freedom University is how can we make these efficient modalities more secure? So this slide didn't really come out too well. Okay, here's a, here's a diagram of our, of our architecture. It looks almost linked list like um, in that you know there are a couple of weird cycles in there. And this is what would happen if you know you had a linked list um, that really was more towards things other than thin clients. And we really want thin clients. You see here that there is uh, an internet cloud here in the middle. Um, you have many devices connected to each other and also connected through the internet. Um, you also have several peripheral devices such as USB keys. This slide really did not turn out too well. But, you know we have a bunch of different computers being networked, and floppy disks as usual, they're not really as important as they used to be. With the lock, they're really trying to show how cryptographers were thinking about thin clients in the past. E is connected to J, J and, and G are, are mutually connected, but the problem, of course, is that G must, uh, must be connected to itself, which, which uh, is simply uh, an impossibility. <laughs>
you like some water, Dr. Uh, uh, Krishnan? <laughs> there, there's some water up here. Please. I'm sorry. There's, <laughs> so, um, I see the results here are really kind of preliminary. While the, the system is, is, is infeasible um, uh, in practice and um, largely infeasible in theory, um, for the application binary interface, as um, seek time goes up, we actually see the inter rate interrate go up for B-trees, but not for web browsers, although there is a lot of noise in that data. What would happen if our web browsers um, could be made lazily discrete? Um, and uh, this could be done uh, simply uh, these days with a, a, a plug-in. There's not much, not much sense in this data, as we can tell, but it kind of has good impact on simplicity. So here we have a graph of um, simulated results, um, and this is a CDF, uh, which uh, means it's, it's, uh, uh, it's hard to read. And you know, this is kind of normalized for some other things that you normally don't see, so it's not the regular exponential curve that we hear so much about. So here we, we, we deployed um, 31 uh, old Macs um, across a 10-node network, um, which in itself involved some uh, tricky wiring. Why did we use Mac touches? Uh, it, well, we got a good deal. Uh, maybe I should have done this at the beginning of the talk because I think it was a little confusing, but I'm going to go over related work now. It's, it's a lot of related work, I know, because sometimes I get overwhelmed by it too. Obviously, there's the, uh, the work of, uh, in 1997 on um, automata that are uh, structured, not, not, just, not simply just structured, but um, extremely structured. Chris Dykes wrote a seminal paper um, in the Journal of Sign Sign Symmetries in 1999. Um, obviously, influenced Jog a great deal. That's actually not that relevant, but it's on the slide anyway. Super pseudo random models, which I, I don't really have to explain how this relates to our work. In conclusion, um, I've presented uh, Scherzo, or Scherzo. Um, I, I have to figure out how to pronounce the name of our own system. I talked about Jog, which is. Um, has a little bit to do with digital analog converters, although I didn't talk about it. Uh, in this talk, you can read the paper for more uh, information about that. Uh, this is a futile effort, but one which we, we believe is valuable nonetheless. We showed that Jog is able to cache virtual algorithms. And in doing so, it prevents the World Wide Web. You know, we have more results in the paper. So uh, that's about it, and thank you. Um, our application uh, re represents a, 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 a minor con contribution to, to uh, thanks. Anyway. It hasn't nope. been a total failure. It has not been a total failure. scarcely attended as it was. Yeah, I so, think we'll be dangerously underfunded next year. Yeah, so we really have to reevaluate our whole project. It turns out that perhaps the market for randomly generated papers is not as, the audience is not as great as we thought it was. 
And then people might actually want to hear something of substance. Oh.